So let's talk about the introduction. Your introduction needs several things. It needs the topic. It needs the thesis that tells us exactly what it is you'll be speaking about in the essay. It needs the argumentative component. It needs a hook. And it needs some background information. Not all readers know exactly what your topic is about, so be sure that you're giving enough background information that you whet the reader's appetite. You don't want to give them too much and overload them, but yet at the same time, you want them to know exactly what it is that you're talking about, especially since we have an international audience with this. All right, so with the introduction, the first thing that you want to do is to make sure that you relate back to the reader. You can do this in a variety of ways. This person actually puts the reader there. The television blares from the next room. You overhear the headline. The bubonic plague killed 1.5 million people out of an estimated 4.0 million people in medieval England. And is it about to make a comeback? You rub your armpit that is sore with a swollen gland the size of a walnut. The news anchor announces the horrific symptoms of the dreaded plague, such as numerous lumps in the armpits or groin, decaying black spots on parts of the body, chills, fever, excruciating pain, and within three days, death. You, your brow breaks out in a sweat as you reach your, for your phone to dial 911. Emergency medical personnel arrive and protect themselves by slipping on space-age looking suits. The first question asked is, where did you contract the disease? Was it from friends who were infected or have you had close contact with farm animals? For hundreds of years, researchers and scientists have debated causes of the Black Death. Many researchers continue to believe the plague was caused by fleas from rats, but new evidence suggests the disease might be airborne. The television news anchor's last words echo throughout the room. Is it possible that today's population remains at risk for another epidemic similar to the Black Death? So what you want to do is make sure that you can relate your topic back to readers. In this case, the writer put the reader in the room, listening to the television, overhearing the headline, and actually believing that they have the Black Death. We also get some basic facts. For hundreds of years, researchers and scientists have debated the cause. Um, and then we get the argumentative component. It is possible that today's population remains at risk for another epidemic similar to the Black Death. That's probably the good argumentative component there. Are we really at risk still? So see how you can relate back to the history, a little bit of background information. For example, 1.5 million people out of an estimated 4.0 million people in medieval England were killed. So how can you work a little bit of that information in without going overboard, yet pulling the reader in, giving the hook, making sure that the reader is put into that place? Now, your hook here probably would be um, where did you contract the disease? Was it from friends who were infected or have you had close contact with farm animals? So are you actually infected? Uh-oh, now what? So we want the reader to actually feel, actually visualize, actually be there with the disease. We want the reader to understand that there may be more people at risk of your disease. Or maybe there won't be more people. Maybe you can prove that it will be eradicated or has been eradicated and will not return. But either way, we want the visual to be there. Now, there are several really good examples in the student example folder. One of those is the senior elderly abuse, which relates back the reader back to being in the room as as the person actually witnesses the abuse on the elderly grandparent. So bring your topic back to the reader. Let the reader see it. Let the reader visualize it. Let the reader be there. Please review some of the examples that are there. Look at the bad examples and the good examples so you know exactly what you need to do. But remember also that if you, something is not yours, it's not your thought, your idea, your knowledge, it has to have a citation. If you're building that citation, be sure to build that below your intro so that I know that the citation and the in-text are going to match. Okay. Now you're not going to see that here because the essay actually continues on, but my citation 
which should be the Black Death of 1348 to 1350. And Greg 1 also should read exactly that on the Works Cited page. And I think you can match those up fairly easily. We'll be looking at citations as we move forward. That's probably one of our biggest challenges along with commas. So you want to make sure that you go over the information for both as we move forward. Now remember that you will be able to rework the introduction until you do get the 100 before you're able to continue on with the history. So we'll make sure that the introduction's right where you want it to be, as well as all the corrections made before you move on. Please review the models. Let me know what questions you have. And as always, I'm here to help you.